I remember too when that happened um because that was around the time i first bought some gold or silver it was probably around 2008 or 9 so i was following that kind of stuff relatively close and i remember that story uh and i remember thinking and i think maybe i was a little uh for many years initially suspicious of bitcoin because i was so kind of mired in the conspiracy world that i was overly negative in my appraisal of everything and i remember thinking well, if they if they rate a guy for that, <laughs> like they're not going to allow Bitcoin, right? I mean, if Bitcoin is what it says it is, uh, you know, they're going to shut that down. And and I think they intended and tried, you know, for a long time to really shut down Bitcoin. They didn't want it to be what it could become and what it is becoming. And, you know, we've seen actually uh, who uh, Bill Gates, Hillary Clinton, within the last couple of weeks, have come out and said. We got to get rid of this Bitcoin. Crypto needs to go away. You know, Hillary, even Hillary is on to the fact that <laughs> cryptocurrency, it's especially Bitcoin, is a threat to the traditional banking model. And they're calling it, you know, terrorism and all this nonsense. But the, the reality is that they're the central bank terrorists, right? They're the ones that are terrorizing the economy and have been for a long time. And, and they're a lot of those people are boomer tier, they're boomer era, uh, which means that they don't realize that people can, within five to 10 minutes, figure out that the monetary system for centuries is a scam. And it's that this is people aren't ready to grapple with that reality that uh, for whatever reason, you know, especially people, you know, I have a lot of uh, my audience is a lot of people probably 25 and younger. They're a lot more hip to being able to figure those things out a lot quicker. So I think that, again, we're kind of at this point where we've, the, the wave has sort of crested and tipped over to where I don't think that we're going to see a, a real shutting down of Bitcoin or any of the stuff that they were threatening in the FUD, you know, 10 years ago, eight years ago, um, because I think it's really proven itself. And um, yeah, I think that the, you're right about when we think about the projects that, for example, Klaus, the World Economic Forum, projects that he recommends and the blockchain that he recommends in his books uh you know it's it's an alternate version where we need to be on the centrally controlled things and the, the and the irony is of course that the original idea here is to not have a centrally controlled mechanism but to have it decentralized and so i think most of those projects and blockchain technologies that klaus and the world economic forum want everybody shifted over to are the ones that are going to be the most threatening and so that's why i think it's central to conservative minded people or people who uh, might be deplatformed to begin to think about the alternate ways i mean we should have already been thinking we should have been on the top of this along i kick myself for not you know getting into uh, this stuff earlier i got into it in 2017 i heard about it in 2012 right and i thought oh it can't be that but uh you know the, the sooner the better so you know the future that we're going into i read a good article i think about six months ago, I don't remember what website it was on, but it was basically arguing that uh, actually, uh, you know, Bitcoin and, and cryptos might actually be a great hedge for going into a great reset because the great reset is going to be kind of a global economic attack. I made a lot of videos last year talking about how I think that's this is really largely, I mean, it's, it's a lot of things. It's a move towards global government and all that, but it's also an economic attack to centralize wealth decentralized control uh and so it's it would be wise for people who want to hedge and to fight against that to go for the systems and the types of things that fight against that and like you said it's a philosophical announcement especially you know bitcoin against that central banking model and that's that's precisely what conservatives need to wake up to what are the implications for bitcoin of the great reset and perhaps even what is your view of the great reset generally? I know you've probably hashed that over many, many times. Yeah, I've done a, a, a lot of podcasts and shows on that in the last couple of years. Uh, so we did several, we, we read and analyzed several of Klaus's books, several of the white papers that dealt with uh, the great reset. Um, and I think that it's part of a long-term technocratic plan that's been there for a hundred years. When people hear technocracy, that's probably what might get some people nervous about things like Bitcoin or uh, cryptocurrencies. But I think that that's it's a uh, you know there's phases and layers of education that we have to go through. Um, and so it's not that any of these technologies are inherently bad; it's that they can be misused. So the point the problem is not blockchain. The problem is not 
the internet. The problem is not e-money, e-cash or any of this stuff because we already use this, right? I mean, we already use the internet. We already, our banking is already <clears throat> more or less uh, electronic when we're using apps to, you know, transfer money already uh, just from our fiat bank accounts. Uh, so none of those things is inherently the problem. Um, the problem is, uh, as you know, when we have um, shadowy, central, uh, private, uh, unaccountable, you know, individuals who can manipulate the currency basically at will. Uh, I just covered a white paper that was uh, kind of in the domain of, uh, I guess you could say conspiracy for a long time, but I think really we've seen uh, vindication of what was written in this white paper in, in 1979, that it's a real document. It's called the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. And that document uh, is about 100 pages, but it covers um, different ways that the society can be manipulated through economic warfare. And they actually, it actually says in the document that what people aren't going to understand is that the economy itself, the, um, the U.S. economy itself, is a weapon. And it's a weapon that targets and attacks the, the, the society, not necessarily just at one point but over time to rob people of their wealth through inflation basically it puts people into a a, a black hole where you run the hamster wheel that powers the black hole <laughs> and the black hole it just always sucks away your value and, and, and your, your wealth over time and you're the one powering the black hole because you keep investing in the system and that was the sort of amazing thing that I'd never really thought about. I mean, I knew about, you know, IMF and all that World Bank and Bank for National Settlements because Quigley covers that really in depth. And he talks about how it's kind of a, a control mechanism. And so we really have to understand that first. And like you said, Bitcoin is a philosophical statement against that. Uh, and so it's really just um, it's, it's that's why it's a great hedge against it because it, it represents everything that is what the great reset is not and it's using in it's using computers and technology obviously to fight on the ground of computers and technology so we're really i think at a critical venture where uh education is key because if people don't choose the right forms of these things they're going to be co-opted into you know fed coin 